MPs and the public pay respect to late Sir Makero. Gona Health Centre in Oro refurbished. And automated teller machines vandalised in Manus. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Monday's news. Many city residents, both young and old, today joined national leaders today to pay their respects to former Prime Minister and member for Moresby Northwest, late Sir Mikera Morata. They lined up at the Parliament's main gate and were ushered into the Grand Hall to bid farewell to an outstanding leader. Among the leaders, Prime Minister James Marape, Opposition Leader Belden Nama and New Ireland Governor Sir Julius Chan all were in attendance. A solemn touch on the casket draped with the PNG flag from the country's founding father, Grand Chief Sir Michael Somaro. Shortly after they took their leave, the public were allowed in to pay their respects to the former Prime Minister, who many described as a renowned reformist. Sir Makera died from a long illness in Australia and his body was flown into the country last week. A state funeral service will be held this Friday and he will be laid to rest at the Independence Hill here in Port Moresby. The demand for health services in rural areas is high and proper infrastructure is needed to serve the people. Gona Health Facility in the Oro province recently saw the opening of a refurbished health centre. The rehabilitation of this health centre was carried out by the Ejivitari DDA at a cost of 300,000 kina. Gona is located in the Oro Bay LLG of the Ejivitari district. Its health center had been run down for years until recently. The, the renovation at Gona, the funding was uh, made um, available through our uh, log development levy that we received from the National Forest Authority. So um, this particular renovation cost us 300,000 kina, but the quality of work is far more than what it was. So I want to thank the local contractor that was engaged to do that. Um, they refurbished uh, the entire um, health center. And the refurbishment was completed by local contractor as zero support services. Member of the Ejivitari Richard Masere was present during the opening of the health center. I think for me, I feel that it's important that I ask a woman to come and cut the ribbon because I think this hospital is meant for mostly the mothers who give birth in this place. So I think it's appropriate that I get a mother to cut the ribbon. The donation of an ambulance was also presented to Ghana Health Centre to assist in its operations. So today uh, I can assure the people of Ghana and within the uh, proximity of Ghana that they now have a, a, um, a well uh, refurbished uh, health centre for them to use. Following the renovation and opening of Gona's health centre, MP Masere also spoke about his plans to rehabilitate 18 other health centres and aid posts across the five LLGs of his district. 1.5 million kina, we've now opened Kikiri. Obviously, Kausada is now the next. And then we're going to move to Wanigela, to up Wanigela, Ajoa, um, over to um, Berebuna, uh, and then we go to... Um, uh, Safia, and then we will do uh, Bareji, and then we'll do Emo, uh, Hirizu, uh, Bago, um, and then just tidy up some of the other ones within the vicinity of Oro, including Fufuda uh, and um, Ambassy. So these are areas that we will be facilitating through this program. Uh, we've budgeted all this money based on our assessment of how much it will cost to renovate uh, each of these eight posts and health centers. Three ATM machines belonging to the Bank of South Pacific were vandalized during the festive period. BSB General Manager Retail, Daniel Font, has said ATM machines in Loringau, Wewak and Kyunga were destroyed during attempts to steal money from the ATMs. There were also minor damages done to the ATMs in Wewak and Kyunga. This incident has come only a month after criminals robbed the Kerama sub-branch that has resulted in the closure of the bank until investigations are completed. There was also an attempted robbery of the Hoskin sub-branch. In the Manus incident, police said five men armed with homemade guns and crowbars broke the glass of the ATM machine and attempted to steal the money. However, the ATM's inbuilt electronic security systematically locked up the cash, making it impossible for the criminals to take the cash. 
A young woman and her family have taken the initiative to raise awareness on drug and alcohol abuse in her village. Over the weekend, Angela Law, who was the winner of the Vocal Fusion 2020, staged a music festival at Tatana Village to raise awareness on these issues. She encouraged teenagers to refrain from drug and alcohol abuse and celebrate New Year with positive attitudes. As a way of giving back to the community and her supporters, the Vocal Fusion winner Angela Lowe staged a music festival in her Motuen village of Tatana. The festival saw youths from the village participated to celebrate the new year with good music from the young musician and vocalist. The young musician also raised awareness of drug and alcohol abuse among teenagers. Because in my village I'm pretty sure the youngsters had an amazing time with alcohol instead of uh, with their family and whatnot, they decided to you know, go with their friends and enjoy their night and new year with alcohol. So that's the little awareness that my family and I have put together to talk about. Drug and alcohol abuse in local communities has been a problem for many years. Every year teenagers tend to celebrate New Year, Christmas or other events on the calendar with alcohol. This has led to the rise in alcohol-related accidents and deaths in the country. And this festive season has been no different for Port Mosby General Hospital, recording a high number of alcohol-related trauma cases. The musician challenged youths to refrain from drug and alcohol and start the New Year with a positive attitude. Yes, 20 of alcohol-related injuries in the first from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Another 20 after that throughout the night. All, most of them major injuries. Some of them are fighting for their lives. Yes. Two deaths, three deaths reported in the emergency department. You guys can celebrate without alcohol or drugs, stuff like that. Since 2021 is a new year, why don't you guys try other things? For example, join a band or go on some competitions, any, anything that can help you be productive in your life and to prolong it. Apart from the music festival and the awareness program, the locals were presented with small gifts from the musician and her family. She further thanked all who have voted for her on Vocal Fusion. So thank you very much to everybody that voted for me, especially my village and the people at Fisherman Island and a big, big thank you to my Barakal family for their endless support throughout this whole competition. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. Medang reported three deaths during the festive period following a number of clashes in town. Provincial Police Commander Superintendent Rubiang Manzuk said one of the deaths was a suicide incident by a female who resides at Nagada Settlement. The Christmas and New Year operation for police in Medan had been very epic. Three suspects involving in the murder of a man at public tank settlement during New Year period surrendered to police at Furan village over the weekend. A house was ransacked and ten houses torched in retaliation to the killing. Meanwhile, at Nagada settlement, a 23-year-old woman from Rai Coast reportedly hung herself. However, police will investigate to confirm the allegations before ruling it as a suicide case. Another death happened in the Christmas period. The men and women in blue recorded a number of clashes in five different settlements in Medang town, putting a big strain on policemen in power. However, police have managed to contain these clashes during the festive season. Since the operation started, this neatly packed marijuana confiscated would be selling at the street value of at least 50,000 kina in Medang. However, if sold in provinces like Manus, Kimbe and East New Britain, the market value would increase to at least 150,000 kina. But random vehicle search and roadblocks by police intercepted these illegal trades from taking place. Police have also confiscated a number of homemade firearms from criminals, including police-issued firearms. Masalovis National and TV News, Medang. 
Two men, including an ex-convict from Lays Buimo Prison, are among a group of men who made their stands during the Christmas period to change their community. They once resorted to crime to make a living because they couldn't find a job to support their families. The two men have now decided to become missionaries. They've applied to Bible colleges. However, they need money for their college fees. We don't need the money, like I can't change the school fee problem. So we play some passing steel again, help him sit on the middle. So that the middle one comes from black and yes, we don't need nothing in the middle start. Teenage them just start him, just start him come come now. I mean, we play big black man, we play looks away or something. Okay, passing them no straight. Look, we're looking. We're looking to power more. We're looking community. We're looking. We're looking some person in the west. Go big pla. Barab bell na tin tin. We're looking for we're looking lost line. So we're looking more. We're looking more standing now. Change. He is a resident of Lace Westarka community and has been in trouble with the law. During the Christmas and New Year period, he made a decision to change. This follows a three-month program on mindset change conducted by the Lutheran Church. People are looking at me, no one play, road bail, people play, set station bail, people play. So government comes up with me, people set now, and by me play, walk boom, and it's low, get a pass in, and by set all. Westarka is an urban settlement in Ley and is home to many crime offenders, including these two men. You know, now today, me play, look at me, now this la situation, the problem is eh, big, but through in the Papua New Guinea now. I look at my look at my pillim hat now, look at my because before Karabus, I'm in Arabla. Now Karabus, I'm going to tie over there. They are among the 16 men who made a stand to change their West Arca community and to work together with the police to bring peace and order. After undergoing the training, they decided to become missionaries. However, they need money for their college fees. I play Palimpin Space Blow, Albert Snekilo, Ogilmang Seminary. Na Nick Mugat Lubans said school is low again. Lubans. But we go school of pasta, but no man no man was about the middle of this lad. Church and me talk finish church no money. Members of the West Tarka community are happy to see such changes happening in their community. They said the churches and the government should work together with them, especially the young people for the betterment of the society. Julie Badui Oa, National MTV News Lay. Over the new year, the small town of Gagiru in Finchhafen came alive with festivities, the highlight of which was a volleyball tournament. This is one of the longest running tournaments in the district. 30 years it has been running and the organizers say they look to see international representatives coming from this competition. Every year a new generation of youngsters joins this tournament to compete for the grand final prize. Since this competition began 30 years ago, teams have gone on to compete against others in the Morobi province. It is the longest running competition in the district. And this year's tournament brought players from all over the district yet again. I still like him to the game. I need him plenty support from all young people now at the time. We got team from yet. Many of the original officials have moved on or passed away. Some are still here, actively involved in the organization of the tournament. We've been staff inside too, long the selection, long the northern zone of Bogia. Within five years, Finchafen District expects to be connected by road to Ley. It will be the first time ever people can travel to Ley by road for competitions. And those involved in organizing the tournament say they hope to raise the standards and play in bigger competitions. Scott Whitey, National MTV News, Ley. And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market this morning. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0 0.2775 US dollars, 0 0.3558 Australian dollars, 0.393819 New Zealand dollars and 27.96 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher. Coffee and cocoa, coffee closed unchanged and cocoa and copra closed higher. 
Palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading higher and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. You're watching National MTV News. We'll bring you stories making headlines overseas after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, U.S. President Donald Trump is in hot water again tonight. He was busted piling pressure on Georgia's Secretary of State to find him nearly 12,000 votes to overturn his election defeat. The president warning him that he could face criminal prosecution if he doesn't comply. President Trump cut short his New Year holiday, returning to the White House and returning to controversy. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. The president openly pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to change the state's election result. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. In the hour-long recording made yesterday, Donald Trump repeated conspiracy theories and appeared to threaten those on the call with prosecution if he didn't get his way. You're not reporting it. That's a, you know, that's a criminal, that's a criminal offence. And, and, you know, you can't let that happen. That's, that's a big risk to you. Georgia's results have already been counted three times, as Raffensperger, himself a Trump voter, was at pains to point out. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. But the president wouldn't let go. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I know you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have, you don't have, not even close. The revealing tape quickly catching the attention of the incoming administration. Well, it was, yes, certainly the voice of desperation. Most certainly that. And it was a bald, bald-faced, bold abuse of power by the President of the United States. The timing of the call couldn't have been worse. Georgia's headed for a Senate runoff election on Tuesday. One of the Republicans on the ballot, Kelly Loeffler, choosing her words carefully today. Everything's on the table. I'm fighting for this president because he's fought for us. He's our president and we're going to keep making sure that this is a fair election. But three million Georgians have voted early. The president's fate and that of the Georgian Republicans appears to be already sealed. OK, Anna's with us from New York. You have to wonder, Anna, what on earth was he thinking? I'm sure many in the Republican Party are thinking that tonight. Melissa, what on earth was Donald Trump thinking? And we don't know yet because the president, surprisingly, has been very quiet about the whole conversation being leaked on his social media. He's moved right on and isn't speaking about it. But, of course, it's big news here in America because there is that Georgia state runoff. And already legal analysts here are commenting that although it may not be a federal offence, what he's been talking about and the pressure he's putting on uh, state officials, it could well count as a breach of Georgia. Georgia's election rules. So there's that to pursue, but there's also uh, the vote on Tuesday coming up here for the Senate, uh, where they will do another round of certification of the electoral results. And some uh, Republicans have said that they'll go along with President Trump and his request to not certify those results. It won't get him any further. This is just another delay tactic for an increasingly desperate president who makes every attempt, it appears, to not want to leave the White House. Police across Canterbury are all armed as an investigation continues into a double shooting overnight in the town of Kayapoi. Two people remain in a hospital. One is in critical condition while two others are in police custody. Blood splatters on the bank door. Evidence in a double shooting in a small North Canterbury town. I'd heard a gunshot in the middle of the night and uh, I sort of didn't thought it might have been a firework. 
and uh, then I heard raised voices. So I sort of was aware something was going on. Neighbours left stunned as armed police swarmed Whitefield and Aldersgate streets in Kaiapoi. I woke up at 4.30 to go to the toilet and seen the flashing lights and looked out and there was just cops everywhere, guns. Scary. Today, as police investigations continued, frontline staff told to arm up. The two men shot are believed to have gang connections and there's fear of retaliation. We had the SWAT team in the backyard all down on the fences camped out. One of the men arrived at Christchurch Hospital in a critical condition with bullet wounds to his arm and torso. The other man was shot in the arm. No problems with the neighbours other than a bit of noise. We had seen one bike with a gang affiliation patch on them and that but I don't know who or what. The double shooting comes after four people were charged with the murder of Headhunters associate Kane Allen Wayman in Christchurch on New Year's Day. But police say no link has been made between the two violent incidents. It is very scary, yes. Two people known to one of the Kaipoi victims have been taken into police custody and are assisting with inquiries. As they continue to investigate, police say there's no risk to the wider community. Still in New Zealand, police are now warned those organised crimes are tightening its grip on illegal drug trade. The revelation comes after a big year of drug bust with increasing amounts of dangerous narcotics used. It's a huge money earner. Most of these groups we're dealing with are, are, are there to either gain money, power or influence. New Zealand's illegal drug trade estimated to be worth a whopping $600 million a year. But police say a three-year crackdown is paying off, with significant busts happening almost weekly. Last year, between us and New Zealand Customs, we stopped and took off the street around 1,200 kilos of meth in three months. Now that's no fluke. Right, that's a lot of hard work. One of the most recent, dubbed Operation Skipjack, seized a record 400 litres of GBL, a more potent version of the drug fantasy. This is New Zealand's biggest domestic seizure to date. However, the biggest concern is P, and it's now a global fight against dealers who are getting more sophisticated. They are intent, absolutely intent, in getting product here. All our users are prepared to pay some of the highest prices in the world for methamphetamine. Organised crime across the world is starting to understand now that that myth is the way to go. More and more of our people that access our residential services identify methamphetamine as a primary drug of concern. And after hours service in central Auckland in high demand. We are seeing about 400 people every weekend through the doors there. The focus now on disrupting supply and cutting demand. We aren't going to arrest our way out of the drug problem. So we need a reinvestment from that sort of judicial uh, process into a health-based approach. What can we do to actually make target, target hearted people in communities to not use meth? So that's a big piece of our work right now. Trying to stay one step ahead of those turning a profit at a high social cost. COVID-19 infections are continuing to rise in the United States and officials say it may only get worse as tens of millions ignored warnings not to travel over the Christmas holiday period, raising fears that the latest surge could continue for some time. Millions on the move in the midst of a staggering coronavirus surge. The TSA screening more than 16 million people this holiday season, with today likely the busiest of the pandemic. I found that there are a lot of first-time flyers, like a lot. Many returning from tourist hotspots like Miami. Beaches there packed with partiers. These images obtained by the Daily Mail showing massive pool parties that officials fear could become super spreader events. The coronavirus doesn't much exist over here, honestly. But this week, Florida reported record infections. Part of a crushing holiday stretch nationwide, 50,000 Americans reported dead in the past 19 days. The deaths are real deaths. I mean, you, all you need to do is to go out into the trenches, go to the hospitals. California funeral homes now renting refrigerators as they're overwhelmed with six times the usual number of bodies. The state reporting 98,000 new cases this weekend, with more patients fighting the virus in the hospital than ever before. We're still seeing the Thanksgiving numbers, and that's really why it's so frightening. We haven't seen Christmas numbers yet, and we haven't seen New Year's for sure. 
In Los Angeles, the mayor says a person is getting infected every six seconds, and more young people with no pre-existing conditions are getting sick and dying. Chicago Sports is next. Fidelis Sukina is at the sports desk. Thank you, Helen. We will have news on football and rugby league after the break. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Good night and welcome to Trukai Sports. To football, the inaugural season for the Women's National Soccer League poses ex exciting times for women who want to make the national team. Despite being the first ever season of the WNSL, PNJFA, are still looking for sponsors for the competition and also broadcasters to expand coverage of the competition. The Women's National Soccer League competition is in recess at the moment before it heads into the second half of the season, starting this weekend with the Northern Conference. Papua New Guinea Football Association President John Capinato says that there needs to be more coverage for the women's competition across the country and also to a wider audience. We're doing an online stream and uh, FIFA are watching that too very closely on our matches here. But we'd like to get a wider coverage. So we're working uh, tirelessly around if we can secure a deal and uh, they can shoot from here. Yeah. There is also a need for the competition to have a strong corporate backing. The Men's National Soccer League had a good year in 2020 despite the COVID-19 experience. The women's competition needs the same level of support from the corporate sector, especially with the women's national team in line for a chance to qualify for the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2023. We are thankful that FIFA has come on board to support the women uh, in a little way, but I think we want to build a partnership with a, with a corporate sponsor, with women, and I think whoever that comes and uh, partner with the women uh, will not be, you know, it's a partnership that will take us through to 2023 uh, Women's World Cup. So my appeal is there to uh, sponsors out there that uh, they can come in to support our Women's National League. In the meantime, Papua New Guinea Football Association President John Capinato says there has been some support from FIFA, but he says that the women will have all the support from PNGFA in preparation for the World Cup qualifiers. I think we are not wrong. I have a strong faith. This, these ladies can make it to the 2023 World Cup. And uh, we're going to put all our, everything behind this woman to make sure that we achieve. And that's one in a lifetime. We are the under 20, but the women's national team is the biggest thing. The 48 teams who participated in the NCD Governors' Cup have been narrowed down to the final four teams who will lock horns in the semifinals. The final four clubs battling for top honours are QPR Colts, Tox, Mafuka Eels, Savaga South Brothers and Mapex GH Eagles. The semi-finals of the NCD Governors Cup will take place tomorrow at the Sir William Skate Oval in Calgary. Following crowd disturbances last week, which resulted in the quarterfinal match between defending champions Bora Storms and QPR Colts being abandoned. The rescheduled match was played over the weekend and resulted in a victory for QPR Colts, defeating Border Storms 8 points to 6. Colts will now face Tox Mafuka Eels in the first semi final, while Savaga South Brothers will take on Mapex GH Eagles in the second semi final playoff. The NCD Governors' Cup final is slated to be played on Thursday, 7th of January. Following the positive response from clubs around Port Mosby, NCD Governors Cup organizers hope that the competition will end on a high note, with the tournament providing valuable game time for players and clubs. Huxley Lovai, Chukai Sports. A local businessman in Western Highlands Province hosted the Charles Lee Cup recently to gather youths and keep them busy during the festives and New Year season. An economist by profession, Charles Lee, said the unemployment rate has risen and such activities will keep the youths out of trouble. 
The competition will continue this year and we'll see the grand final much later. More than 32 teams are competing to win 10,000 kina cash prize and a 5,000 kina worth of trophy, the Charles Lee Cup. Lee is bringing rugby league to the districts, naming it the district of origin as a way of keeping youths busy and away from causing trouble during the festive season and new year. Um, so what we're trying to do is bring them all together so that they can participate in sports. We believe that you know sports is, a, is also... Um, part of personal development. So in sports, you know, there's friendship. You know, when people start to play sports, they look after their bodies, they stay away from criminal activities, they keep themselves busy. A total of 100,000 kina was given to run this off-season match where youths from Western Highlands province are competing. The off-season match has also attracted franchises from the National Rugby League teams and the PNG Rugby Football League, identifying raw talents to join their teams when the season starts. Western Islands, we only have one team, which is the Eagles. Uh, Eagles, we only have 17 spaces. You can't fit everyone in. So what we're trying to do is get franchise clubs from outside of the province to also come in and look at our boys. So we actually, through this competition, we're bringing back rugby league back to the villages, back to its districts. The match is in its final leg before going into knockouts. Semi-final loser will walk away with 4,000 kina and the grand final loser will get 6,000 kina. We plan to present it to but bring them all going inside long. Mount Higan Rugby League, playoffs, finals. Vasenata Yama, Trukai Sports. And Trukai Sports continues after the break with volleyball in the Ayura Valley of Eastern Highlands Province. Don't go away. Trukai Sports. And welcome back to Trukai Sports. Villagers at Ayura Auhana Buraa enjoyed a three-day volleyball tournament sponsored by a local man, Vincent Batau, who works with PNG Forest. He said all he wants to see is a happy community. A total of 16 teams contested in the competition in which eight teams made it to the knockouts. Four teams competed in the finals and the competition saw Team Buraa coming out on top to win a cash prize of 700 kina. There were many other smaller games like the Sutim Spear, Nabunara, to win different prizes, and everyone of all ages were able to take part in different competitions. All other teams also got consolation prizes. Turning overseas, it is the story of day two of the second test against Pakistan. How many superlatives can you find for Kane Williamson? Hint, it probably won't be enough. There it is. As if his place among the greats was not already assured. Kane Williamson brings up Test Century 24. His first century at Hagley Oval, his third in his many tests this summer. What a performer, world class Kane Williamson. And it wasn't just the timing of Williamson's shots that were typically sublime. This knock came as his team desperately needed him to steady the ship. After the Black Caps openers started strong but fell in quick succession this morning. Tom Latham in freakish circumstances. Sean Masood shells it and Harris Ale picks it up. That's brilliant. That is outstanding. Great reflexes. And then it was just a pile on. <laughs> Pakistan's disciplined bowling paying off again shortly after lunch too. Ross Taylor dismissed the visitors jubilant, the Black Caps battling, and lucky not to be sent to the brink. Oh, Ashton taken. Oh no. Pakistan. What are you doing? Get their front foot behind the line. Henry Nichols reprieved, he and Kane Williamson consolidating as the afternoon wore on. That is a classical Kane Williamson back foot drive. Having to withstand plenty of pressure to make it through the rest of the session with their wickets intact. An attritional approach which brought reward. Nichols following Williamson and bringing up his half century. That is an important innings. For New Zealand. Before the skipper upped the tempo. His first 50 came off 105 balls, his second just 35. This guy is just out and out genius. Another knock to treasure, even more so in that it's become the norm, as Williamson's brief but golden test summer continues. That story wraps up Trukai Sports. 
the weather forecast for the next 24 hours when we come back. Bye for now. True Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. A few rain drizzles and possible thunder, then fine partly cloudy weather tomorrow in Port Moresby. Light showers and rain drizzles, then fine partly cloudy weather in Daru. Partly cloudy with chance of a few showers tonight, then a fine morning in Popondeta. Mostly cloudy with a shower or two, then a fine morning in Kerama. And mostly fine though partly cloudy in Alatau. In the Mombasa region, mostly cloudy with a few showers and drizzles in Leh. Light rain drizzles tonight, then a fine morning in Medang. Cloudy with light showers and drizzles at times in Wewak. Cloudy with occasional rain showers and drizzles, then a fine morning in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, light rain drizzles and fine partly cloudy morning in Lorengau. Mostly fine, though partly cloudy in Kaviang. Fine, partly cloudy weather tonight with morning shower or two in Kokopo and Rabao. Thundery rain showers tonight, then a fine, partly cloudy morning in Kimbe. And mostly fine, partly cloudy weather tonight and a shower or two tomorrow morning in Buka. In the Highlands region, rain showers and possible thunderstorms tonight, then morning fog in Mount Hagen. Light drizzles tonight, then morning fog in Guroka and Kundiawa. And rain drizzles tonight, then morning fog in Mendi and Wabeg. Forecast for small ships, there is renewal strong wind warning for all waters of Pacific Ocean. Northwest to northeast wind surge of wind surges of 20 to 30 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours, causing rough and high seas. All small crafts and boats are advised to stay away from the mentioned areas during the forecast period. A look at the forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Waters of Long Island to Karkar Island to Wewak to Aitape and the northern PNG Indonesian border, including waters of Manus and its western group of islands, with waters of New Ireland to Bougainville and with waters of east and west New Britain, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres. Waters of Samaria Island to East Cape to Cape Vogel through Hue and Gulf to Finchhafen, with waters of Finchhafen through Vitiaz and Dampier Straits, to CSC and Long Island seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of eastern and western Milby Island seas of 1 to 2 meters. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerama to Yule Island and to Hood Point and Samurai Island seas of 1.5 to 2.5 meters. A look at the ocean forecast, the PNG areas in the Coral Sea. Seas moderate to rough with west to northwesterly winds at 20 to 30 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas slight to moderate with northwest to northeasterly winds at 10 to 20 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, seas slight with north to northeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas slight with northeast to easterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the way it is this Monday, the 4th of January 2021. From all of us here at MTV, pleasant viewing. Good night.